All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Optiplex 3060. All right, and this design actually shows you how computer manufacturers could easily design their computers to be modular and easily workable, repairable, whatever you wanna call, like parts replaceable, all right? <clears throat> so here you can see there's this one finger screw that you can just twist here. I mean, it has a screwdriver um, thing in case you can't twist it by hand, all right? Once you undo that screw, you just slide this, so lay it down and slide it over this way, and then you can lift this off. All right, so first thing, you can remove the cover very easily. Next, <clears throat> you have a hard drive here. You see that? There's a two and a half inch SATA hard drive or SSD. Um, I'm pretty sure this was installed afterwards, but uh, let me show you how easy it is to remove this. So let me zoom in a little bit here. See this tab? Pull that. Um, I don't think you need, actually you do need to pull that one too because it catches down there. So you pinch these two and you basically just slide it over. Not only that, but they even show you here, they have a little diagram there. Okay, pinch that, and then they tell you how to slide a new one in. Here you see, disassembly, pinch it and pull it out. So not only do they make it easy to remove and assemble, but they show you how right on the device. So pinch that. I'm gonna pull from here, cause it's easier. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this and there you go. So you slide that, you see it hits this thing and it stops it. Once you do that, you just lift it out. <clears throat> Super easy. All right, there you go. There's a two and a half inch SATA hard drive or SSD. <clears throat> Not only that, but to replace this, you don't even need tools. Look, you pull that and you can pop it out, right? You can get a new one in. You slot that back in, get the little screw holes lined up. All right, this uses no screws, but these are screw holes. Then you just... Pull this out, get it lined back up, drop it in, clicks in, holds itself in place. You don't need to worry, right? It's holding itself nicely. Um, they didn't make that design like easily removable here. I mean, it's easy enough. You just use screwdri a screwdriver, like a PH1 or JIS1, and then you can take that screw out. The SSD will pop up slightly. You can pull it out. I believe this is a slot for an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, but they are using an M.2 SATA SSD here. So I'm assuming this slot supports both, but I don't know because I didn't try putting an M.2 PCIe NVMe. Again, there's an M.2 SSD there, SATA. Wireless card has this little plastic thing to help hold the antennas down, but there's the one screw, pops up like the SSD, pull it out. The antennas come out by, first you have to slide this plastic thing out after you remove the screw, and then you go from the tail and you pull straight up, the antennas pop out easily. That designs on all the laptops <coughs> and desktops that use wireless cards. All right, then you got this little ROM recovery jumper thing. I'm not sure how this works. You would need like a diagram. Um, it's too cramped here, but sometimes they would actually even write what that's for. Okay. There's a bio CMOS RTC. You see, they label it RTC real time clock battery here. CR 2032. If your date and time keeps getting reset or your BIOS resets, you'll want to replace this battery. There's a little clip here. You push that over and then this can pop up. I'm not going to pop it out because I don't want to reset their BIOS. Wireless antenna obviously is also easily removable. You just unscrew that and take it off. I'm going to leave that on there. <clears throat> There's another little jumper here. Um, you can see it says jump one. And I'm assuming this is to reset the BIOS. I don't want to mess around with it. Um, maybe you can find something online that will tell you how to do that. But yeah. All right. Um, here they have USB 3 and USB 2 ports. And... Um, I guess on the board they label this USB 3, USB 1, USB 2. I think those are just the numbers of the ports and then USB 4, right? Then you have this little connector. I'm assuming it says video, so it's probably so you can add an external video connection, but I'm not sure. You can see they labeled the SATA 0 port. Um, they have this K KB and MS. So I'm assuming this lets you maybe add a keyboard and mouse. Um, maybe they reuse this board for other computers. All right, then you got this. You'd think, okay, we got to unscrew some of these things, but actually you don't need to unscrew this either. You got these little pinch tabs, pinch it. Okay, kind of wiggle it around. Um, it doesn't come out super easy, but you can wiggle it around and then you can kind of get this out. Let's see, it's getting caught here. Okay, 
So let's see, kind of wiggle. Okay, there we go. And you can see we pinched it, we wiggled it, it's unclipped. You have these two cables here, so be careful with that. And you can slide it over and you can flip this over, right? And here you can see the two connectors are right there for the fan and the speaker that's on there on the back. That's what's held in with those two screws there. That's the speaker, all right? And then you got the two RAM slots. Um, only one is being used right now. You pull the two tabs to the side, the RAM will pop up and you can slide it out. I'm not gonna take it out, but here you go. And this is an 8 gig stick PC4 2666V. 8 gig PC4 2666V. So there's a DDR4 RAM, All right? Again, also super easy to remove. Um, it looks like underneath the CPU is also removable. You see that metal thing towards the top over there? Um, that's like a little clip release that you kind of press down and then move it outwards and then it springs up. Um, that helps push the CPU down onto the pins. And then you have this heat sink that's on top. Obviously you have to remove that first, but if you're gonna do that, make sure you're gonna have to redo the thermal paste. So yeah, All right? And oh, here you can see. So here's the um, diagram. So you can see for the jump one, they have pins one and two are clear CMOS. Pins three and four, password clear. So if there's a BIOS uh, password, you can actually remove that using the jumper. And then they have a service mode, five, six. And then here you see operation. If you short the one and two, um, basically it will clear the OS. And by default, or not the OS, the BIOS or CMOS. And then by default, it's open. So the password clear, by default, it's um, shorted. And then when you open it, when you disconnect it, it clears the password. And then the service mode is, um, if you short it, it disables it. And if you have it open, it's by default, that's what's default, all right? So, here you can see uh, where'd it go, jump one. So you can see these two here, jump one. So there's the six pins, two at the top, two in the middle, and then two there, and it's right now with the three and four pins shorted by default. So yeah. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and get this thing back together. Very simple. Again, you just, oops, one of my, I got that cables caught on there. Make sure you don't get it caught in that little groove down there. Okay, so we'll just flip this back over. We'll get this, pull it back, slide this underneath that bracket there. Okay, once you get that, just line that back up click that down and oops, make sure it clicks on both sides and there we go it's good holds itself in place blows the air through the heat sink and we're good to go we got to slide back in the hard drive um, and that's pretty much it this design is super nice okay again you line up this little rectangular hole so that the square is all the way um, to that front and then once you do that, you can slide this. I like to pinch both sides like this, just that way so it's not pushing all the force onto the SATA port. Also, if it doesn't line up right, there's no chance that you're gonna shove that off and rip it out. All right, then the cover, obviously, you start slightly uh, with it open on this side, drop it down, slide it back, and tighten this finger tight screw. And that's pretty much it. Super nice and easy, all right? This was refurbished, I guess. Um, and yeah, super nice, simple to get to and works really well. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that you can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, uh, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, watch a few of my other videos, like and comment on those as well so that the algorithm will share my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.